do some recording so we can kind of you took the notes and now we're just going to kind of give some examples of this so if they tell us to um, write an algebraic ex expression and they say the product of 15 and C product means multiplication so that is going to be 15 times C or we can write it 15 times C or we can write it 15 times C but in algebra we usually just write it like this when the letter and the number touch like that that means multiplication the quotient of n and a you would write out as quotient means division and we could say n and a but we don't write it like that we write it as a fraction n divided by 8 when they say 23 less than x that means there is an x and we're going to do 23 less than that. So you see the order changes. If they said 23 minus x, then the 23 would go first. But because they said less than, that means that there's a something and then we have 23 less than that. Does that make sense to you? It's kind of tricky. Yeah. Okay. And then if they say the sum, that means addition. So if they said the sum of V and A, you would write that. Okay. So <clears throat> order of operations, we know PEMDAS. So this is parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So if you had something that looked crazy like this, you would use your PEMDAS. So first we have to do our parentheses. So this goes first. So we're gonna rewrite everything that's not in the parentheses. And we're gonna say 15 and then parentheses. We're gonna solve this right here. 13 minus seven is six. And that's all we're gonna do for the first line. You can only do one operation per line. Everybody wants to start solving, but don't do that. So then we're going to look here and we're going to say, okay, we have another parenthesis. So I know that PEMDAS tells me I have to solve that next. Even if I want to solve this first, this isn't really a parenthesis because we already solved it. It's a multiplication like this is, like we did up here. So does that make sense to you how that's different than this kind of? Parentheses. Yeah. Okay, so this is something to be solved. So then we rewrite this and then we solve inside the parentheses and that's three. Now we have PEMDAS tells us that we do multiplication and division and multiplication doesn't win over division. It doesn't get done first. These get done together. So now I have multiplication and I have division. Once I have multiplication and division together like this, I just go left to right. So here's my left and I just start by doing 15 and a lot of times in seventh grade you're able to use a calculator so 15 yeah. times 6 is 90 divided by 3. So now that's our next line and now we do 90 divided by 3 is 30. So that is our order of operations problem. Okay, now we're gonna do an evaluate. So in our vocabulary, we had evaluate as one of our vocabulary words. And what evaluate means is they're gonna give you what something is and you're gonna plug it in. So you're gonna say C times D squared and they're gonna tell you that C equals 15 and D equals 12. So every time you see a C, you're gonna write 15, and every time you see a D, you're gonna write 12. And then this whole entire thing gets squared. 
So we're going to first do 15 times 12, which is 180. And then we're going to square that, which is going to be a big number. It goes up quickly. So it's going to be 32,400. Okay, <clears throat> next one, we're going to do a harder order of operations. We are going to do two, sometimes we have brackets. Like that. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to solve inside the parentheses, inside of the brackets. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> So you're going to rewrite everything and you're going to say 6 squared divided by 3. Now you solve inside of the brackets, but we have exponents. So we're going to do 36 first. We're going to put this in our brackets and then we're going to rewrite our 2. Now we're going to do... 2 times, what is 36 divided by 3? 12. Brackets and parentheses both mean multiplication. So now we're going to do 2 times 12 is 24. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. We have... Simplify, okay, so if they say simplify, which was one of our vocabulary words, each expression, what that means is you're going to make it as small and compact and simplified as it could possibly go. So if I had something that looked like this, there's no equal sign, so that's going to tell me I'm not going to actually have an answer. I'm just going to take this as far as I can go. So this is 2 plus 3 is 5 squared minus 10. So they just want you to do this. They want you to take it as simple as it can be. And then I'm sorry, you are going to have an answer. I don't know what I was saying with that. I guess I was thinking algebra. <laughs> And then they just want you to make it as simple as it could go. Does that make sense to you? So the biggest thing that you have to do is make sure that you keep everything nice and organized and nice and neat, which is hard for everybody. So it's really important to do that. So for example, this is M equals 3, P equals 7, and Q equals 4. So you're first going to plug in m, p is 7 squared minus 4. So that's your first step. And now it just becomes a regular old order of operations. But first we have to plug everything in. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Now we know we do inside the parentheses first. And I have an exponent, so that's always going to come first. Now I solve for that. And now I solve 45 times 3, which equals 135. Okay. And I'm breaking my own rule. So normally, being neat means you don't squish that in, but I totally ran out of space. So, <laughs> um, okay. So, they're going to talk to you about inequalities when you first, like in your first chapter. And you remember an inequality is more than, less than, and equal to. And why that is important is because they're going to say things like A is less than B, A is equal to B, A is more than B. Then there's something that I don't think we've talked about yet. Maybe we breezed by it. There's also something that looks like this. So the equals is the same. And then yeah. this is the same, but it's also equal. Do you remember that? Yeah, kind of. Okay. So what this means is that we're going to solve for a number. So suppose we decided that the number, we solved something, and it said x is more than or equal to 5. 
What that means is that the number includes five as a possible solution, but it also includes everything above five. So it could be six, 20, 500, we don't know. This just means it could be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, all the way up because five is not included. And how we know is that this right here tells us that this number that they're saying is included in there. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, this one says it's not five, it's anything above five. So five is not included. Okay, this is hopefully a review. Yeah. This means how many jumps away from zero? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And so you might have something that looks like this. They want you to say, is it more than, less than, or equal to? So the first thing you're going to do is solve it. And we know that 19 and 19 This is 19 and this is 19. So would it be more than, less than, or equal to? Um, well, when, um, well, the bottom one, like the 19 and the 19? Yeah. Yeah, it would be equal to. Yeah. So they might put something like this in a fraction and it mm -hmm. could be positive or negative it's still 93 thirds away from zero so even if it's a fraction it could be a decimal it could be whatever it whatever it's still the same concept so this would equal this and if i had something like this it would still equal 5.3 does that make sense to you? Yeah. All right, awesome. Um, okay, now we have um, our positive, negative, and um, numbers. And so if I had this, we're just gonna review this because this is gonna come up. Mm -hmm. Biggest integer wins a sign. Do you remember that? Yeah. Biggest integer is 12, so my answer is negative. I have a positive and a negative, so I subtract. 12 minus 3 is 9. If I had something like this, biggest integer wins the sign. And then I have a negative and a negative, so I add the integers, negative 15. And then if I had something that looked like this, these two go together, make a positive, and then I like to rewrite the problem so that I don't get confused. Biggest integer wins the sign. My answer is positive. I have a positive and a negative, so I subtract. 12 minus 3 is 9. Yeah. Okay, so they might have things. You're, this is going to blow your mind, Hadley. They might have something that looks like this. So it's going to be positive and negative integers it could be decimals same thing which is the biggest integer 10.3 or negative 8.7 and then you're going to do the same process so it doesn't have to just be a whole number it could be anything does that make sense to you yeah okay it could even be a fraction so for a fraction we would first have to find out which is the biggest fraction so for example, if I had negative 5 ninths plus 1 third, I don't know which one is bigger yet. I could guess, and I might be right, but we're going to first turn it into equivalent fractions by doing this. And now I could see this one's bigger. This one was negative, so my answer is going to be negative and five minus three is two. Now, do you see how confusing this is? This says plus, so you would think it would be eight ninths, right? But this is negative, so it's not really a plus. This is 
like this. And we know biggest fraction wins the sign. And we have a negative and a positive. So we are actually going to subtract when it comes to the bottom part. Okay. Kind of weird, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you just remember that, it's, it's a little confusing, you'll you'll be fine. Okay, um, for algebra, they, st they might actually do crazy stuff like put algebra in like that. And now we have to solve. So we know that a negative and a negative make a positive. So we rewrite it as t plus 2 equals 10. And then we now have just a regular old algebra problem, but we had to do something to get that. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to say they're adding 2, so what do I have to do? Yep, just subtract 2. Yep. And then anything you do on one side, you do on the other. What's left on this side is t. And then 10 minus 2 is 8. So it's just one more step. You have to first sometimes solve for this. Okay. Whoops. So you are going to solve. Ah, it's hard to, let's see. It's not cooperating with me. Um, so you're going to pause the video and you are actually going to solve. Normally I don't give you this many, but I kind of have to because I want you to understand it. I'm going to give you this whole row to do. So 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So the odds, or the evens? Um, all the odds. Uh, sorry, oh. evens. You're right. Mm -hmm. Even. So page 27, 6 through 24 evens. Okay. Um, then I'm going to give you this one. So we're going to do, they're telling you what N is. So every time you see an N, you put this 3.5 in. And I'm going to give you 28 to 35 all, because you need a lot of practice with this to get used to it, because it's yeah. kind of tricky. And then I'm going to give you number 39 and 40. And so <clears throat> we haven't done this in a while. So let me just go over an example of how to do this. So here's the problem. We're going to do a negative 7, negative 5, 0, and blank. And here's the problem that they want you to substitute a for. So you're basically going to, wherever you see an a, you're going to substitute a negative 7. So your first problem, let me get a blank sheet. Your first problem is going to be a plus 5, and they want you to do it when a is negative 7. They want you to do it when a is negative 5. They want you to do it when a is 0. So then we're going to solve that. This is negative 2. This is 0, and this is 5. And you're going to write the number right here. So when a is negative 7, the answer is negative 2. So negative 2 would go right here. When a is negative 5, 0 would be the answer. When a is 0, the answer is 5. And then for this, they gave you an 8. So you're going to do a plus 5 equals 8. Instead of finding the answer, you're going to solve for A. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. So they're adding 5. I'm going to subtract 5. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. A equals 3. So instead of doing it here, you're going to put it right here because you solved for what A was. Do you have any questions about that? Okay. Okay. So you're going to do 39 and 40 for homework. Okay. And then this is something that's important. If you have this kind of a problem, 
So the absolute value we know, if you have an absolute value that is negative five or like this, we know the answer is five. When there's a negative outside of the absolute value like this, the answer is always negative. So that negative follows it. So it's negative five because there's a negative outside of the absolute value. That's the only time you would have a negative absolute value. Because we know this is five. Even though there's a negative right here, it's inside of the absolute value. This follows into the answer and your answer would always be negative no matter what. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so that is chapter, I think that's the whole, oh, that's not chapter one. Um, this is more of the same. And then... Yeah, let's just do a little bit more. Um, so you can do 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 for homework. And then can you send it to me before our next session? What, if, even if you don't get the whole thing,